Hey friends, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish, here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy GM Prep. In this show, I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday role-playing game. In this case, I am running a Shadow Dark role-playing game campaign called The Gloaming, which comes from Curse Scroll 1. The Shadow Dark RPG and Curse Scroll 1, which includes The Gloaming, are both available on the Arcane Library, a fantastic website that's got a fantastic store with lots of awesome products. Shadow Dark RPG is a really, really fun role-playing game kelsey dion kickstarted this last year old school style role-playing game very low survivability boy we had some deaths and really fun really fun rpg that that harkens back to the early days of DD where you could get killed by a giant rat pretty easily this show, like all the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. Patrons get access to all kinds of tools and source books and tips and tricks and community resources for running awesome games. You get a dedicated Discord server. You get the monthly Q&A, Uncovered Secrets Volume 1 and 2, the City Virtues source book, a whole bunch of tools, lots of great stuff that you get for being a patron of Sly Flourish. To the patrons of Sly Flourish, thank you so much for helping me put on shows like this. Really appreciate it. Boy, so I've kind of changed as a GM. So last week, if you recall, if, you, if you've been following along, our band of adventurers had just gone through Bitter Mold Keep to recover what they referred to as the, tr the pure essence. The pure essence is a chemical that they took from an elder evil called Mugdoblub. They actually met Mugdoblub, and Mugdoblub kind of didn't care. They managed to scrape some of its of its otherworldly oozy essence into a bottle, almost died doing so, found a evil dagger in the process that had just been lying around in Mugdoblub's lair, found out that one of the character's mothers is the one that opened the realm that brought Mugdoblub in. They took all that. They're making their way out. They're trying to get back to town with their true source. And they got, they were singing a song about 100 barrels of beer on the wall. An ogre heard this attack saying where are the barrels of beer they killed the ogre then they made a way further continued to singing their song and then a dragon showed up and said where are my barrels of beer so they're like well we're probably not going to be able to take care of this dragon the same way we took care of the ogre and they talked to it so there are different ways that you can talk to a dragon and there there's some that are recommended and then there's some that are not recommended and i think we have a case of a way to not talk to a dragon which is back talk it's probably mockery and back talk is probably not the best way to talk to an angry forest dragon who's now really pissed off that you didn't have any barrels of beer after all of this time. So they said, hey, we don't have barrels of beer. We have, you know, we were just singing it. Don't you understand metaphor? God, dragons, they don't even understand metaphor. And the dragon's like, are you telling me I've spent two days listening to you sing that terrible song and there's not even any barrels of beer for me? And they're like, no, one of the characters in particular said, no, there's no barrels of beer. God. And the dragon's like, I, I want some barrels of beer. And the other players are like, look, we had to listen to that crap for two days too. We we're on your side. We know, we know how, you know, we know how terrible that singing was. And the dragon is like, oh, God, I had to listen to it for two days, too. It's terrible. And the guy's like, really? I thought it was pretty good. 100 barrels of beer on the wall, 100 barrels of beer. And the dragon just like looks over and impales the character with a claw right through their chest. Just boom, right? This is this particular character was Gim, not, not, not Varro, Varro who held the door. Varro gets impaled to a tree after back talking the dragon, which seemed reasonable, right? It seemed reasonable. So they're impaled to the tree. Oh! right dying like you know it's like 16 damage or something or a crazy amount of damage they're pinned to the tree oh they're dying and the dragon just kind of like looks at them and i think the dragon was willing to like unimpale him from the tree let him fall to the ground and then the characters could try to deal with death saves and everything like that like it wasn't a death outright and the dragon kind of like closes in on on him and says do you have any anything else you want to say to me and says you know first first second first same as the first 100 barrels of beer at which point the dragon takes two of its claws on one hand pinches the nose closed of Varro, so Varro right pinches Varro's nose closed tilts his gently tilts his head back and puts his mouth over him as though he is going to give him mouth to mouth and breathes chlorine gas into Varro's system at which point all of Varro's internal organs liquefy. 
and he's turned into a, oh, I just and then he just lets him go and he just falls in this puddle of horror on the ground and all the other characters are like we'll get you as many barrels of beer as you want and the dragon's like I thought that might be the case and they they start negotiating with the dragon right and like oh we'll we'll do it you know and the dragon's like that's right and then the dragon looks at Varro and he's like why are his bones all wobbly like like i don't think i did that right look at this like look at his leg bone it bends and like oh yeah he was cursed with mugdoblob's curse and the dragon's like he was cursed by mugdoblob's curse oh and he looks and he's got like a big sore on his lip right the dragon has a sore and it's growing he's like oh uh, uh, and I'm like yeah we're making a cure for this thing and he's like i think i might need the and like yeah you got a thing there and like that's something on your oh you might want to get that looked at and the dragon's like oh this is such a terrible idea and the dragon's like i i'll help you get this cure what what you know what do we do and they're like well we're going back to <laughs> we're going back to drusilla's hut there's this hag and we killed her but she has a laboratory and that she had all these books and instruments and that's where we we're going to make the cure for mug of love's curse and he's like great where do i meet you and like well it'd be fast if you took us there he's like great hop on and so <laughs> next thing you know they're doing the never-ending story going yay <laughs> riding on the dragon heading across the land to go to drusilla's hut so that they can get the cure and cure this this dragon and they they get to the hut and they're like you know who would have loved this ride varro <laughs> right but varro's dead he's a liquid pool back back by this tree they were like and then they they all of course respectfully looted his corpse with whatever they could find on it so they made their way back to the to drusilla's hut went through the the trap door which they forgot was totally trapped and i i can't remember i think someone else got killed so many characters have died now gim yeah so they they went down there and i rolled randomly for a trap as a petrifying trap and they got turned to stone. So they were stuck and turned to stone. And then they said, well, maybe if we use some of Mugdoblob's essence, it will stop the stone. Like ooze would get rid of the stone. So they poured on the ooze onto the stone, at which point it melted the finger of, of Gim. And then a oozy tentacle came out and started flopping around and trying to grab them. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, maybe that's just Gim. Like, I'm sure that's okay. Right. <laughs> I was like, no, it's either now... You know, and and I asked Gim, so I asked a player, I kind of said, hey, offline, I'm like, do you want Gim back or do you want to roll a new character? And like, I want to roll a new character. So I'm like, okay, Gim is now permanently petrified. And if they ever unpetrify Gim, they, Gim will immediately turn into a big ooze pile. So like, I guess Gim's gone. So that was the second character who was killed last time. So they make their way to the laboratory. They're working on the laboratory. Things kind of went good, bad at first. And they're pouring all the stuff into a big vat. They're following Drusilla's instructions to make the, or the revert, kind of reversing the instructions because Drusilla is making the curse. They're trying to beat the curse. And they created this thing and it exploded. They rolled poorly on the check and it exploded and turned into a, a giant ochre jelly, like an elder essence ochre jelly however it worked i did this sort of like failing forward idea which is you've created the cure only the cure is this sentient ooze monster and then they did like the you know an, like the equivalent of like an animal handling check she like gave it blood she kind of you know what the character kind of put blood into it and you know said like no we're friends this was yeah so we have a bunch of goblins now i think it was lick mac yaks yaks pick is the new <laughs> greenish goblin the new goblin who i think is a rogue i don't even know what class they are and so they essentially did like the equivalent of an ooze handling check and they rolled really well they got like an 18 at which point the ooze is now kind of like following them around so like yay we have a sentient ooze cure and it occurs to me the sentient ooze cure who i think has a name i think they 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 call it something oh uh crisper it is known that ooze the ooze thing is known as crisper as you can imagine so CRISPR, the sentient ooze, is now following them al- around and they're making their way, they're kind of making their way out of the lair. And that is where the, the, and their plan is to go back to the goblin village because there's all these goblin characters now and they're like, well, the reason we're here is our, our village has the curse too and we want to cure the curse. So we want to go back to the goblin village. Well, guess what? 
there is no goblin village. Like, I don't have a goblin village. So the most important thing we have to do today during our prep is make a goblin village, which is what we are going to do. So uh, we're going to generate a new session planning template so that we've got one going here. Uh, you can, if you are curious what I'm using, I'm using Notion. You can find information about using Notion for campaign planning in the show notes. And today is 26 November. So our current living characters are Sirwin, the elf priest, who still has survived this whole time. Sirwin, is, Sirwin and Morrigan are the only two original characters. Then we have Lickmack, Yaxpick, Dazdor, known as Jay's third character, and Vom, halfling in black leather armor, who runs up with a heroic spark. This is my other trick. And, and yeah, so he, there's an interesting issue concerned like situation that has come up with a game like this where when you have it there's a couple of things that have come up and i brought it up before that the whole idea that you know the the, the general philosophy of D is meant to be hard and deadly kind of falls apart when car- players are so not attached to their characters that they treat them like hit points or gear in fact in some cases, they get better gear because they get all of the gear of their new character plus anything they're able to loot off their old dead body. So you actually, the characters have become desensitized to character death, which is why you have them back talking dragons because they don't care, right? They're like, oh, I'll just have, a, you know, the dragon breathes on me. That was funny and fun and we enjoyed it. And I, you know, I said, like, I remember like the first one, I was like so reverent in the death of the character. And now I'm having a green dragon do mouth to mouth with chlorine gas because it's funny. And, and they don't care. So they actually, one of the characters, so the characters have hit fourth level. They've, they've, after, after recovering enough, you know, they got these like epic rewards and they achieved, some of them achieved fourth level. At which point one of the players who, the one that played, the one that played Varro said, do I get to go to fourth level? And it's like, no, you don't have the experience point for it. Your experience resets when you died. Your new character starts in at zero. And they're like, but if I die, I'll start at the same level as everybody else. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can tell where this is going, right? Like, I, I hang myself, right? I throw myself into that pool and swim around looking for that the Hydra that we saw last time. So that doesn't really work either because you don't want players to purposely kill off their characters just to, you know, raise a level. You want, you want some kind of detriment. So I'm going to talk to the players today. One of the things I want to do is talk to the players about the more reasonable way to have new characters join in. And I think the way we're going to do it, I think that this works, is essentially your, your, your new character joins in at the same level as your old character and, and at zero experience points. So if you had a third level character, you have a third level character, but any experience points that previous character had is gone because you died and you start at zero again. I think that feels reasonable. The only issue that would come up in... I think I think in early games, I guess it even still works. You'd start at, like even if characters are second level, you'd start at first. You'd still get to second level pretty quickly. So I think that makes sense. That way, there's not like you're not following the character average. You're instead if you have a new player that comes in, you might start that new player at zero experience at the current level. But a, but a player who's been there who has a character and dies should probably bring in a new character of whatever their previous level was, but with no experience points. So that way, if you gain any experience points, you really don't want to die because you don't want to lose the experience points you got. That gives some incentive to not backtalk green dragons. So I think we're going to talk about that. But there's another concern, another issue that comes up, which is as characters are dying in a very deadly RPG, the motivation for the characters changes that they don't really care about the same things that their other characters cared about. So if you have four characters that go into uh, a village and they find out that the village is cursed with Mugdoblub's curse and they want to cure the village and then they go off to cure it, but then three fourths of them die on the way. And now three new characters are there who never went to the village. Well, their motivation is different. And only one character remains who even knows that that happened. So then you're like, well, okay, I think that the way old school style games are going to go is that the campaign story is for the players. The characters are just sort of their resource that they use to go through the campaign story that they, that they, they move forward with that. And 
the problem that you have with that is then the players are very disassociated from their characters. And it reminds me very much of playing Darkest Dungeon, the video game Darkest Dungeon, which was a, you know, four adventurers going off into dungeons to cat, to get loot and, and build up and try to, you know, go face this thing. And there was a moment when you're playing Darkest Dungeon, if you've ever played it, where you realize that you are not the characters that you're running. You don't fall in love with any of the characters because they are eventually going to go insane or die or something terrible is going to happen to them. Sometimes you just have to kick them loose. They are, they're so cursed by what they've seen they have so many detriments you just boot them and and out they go and what you realize is like you're a bad headhunter you're a, a human resources department from hell not the characters that your job is to cycle through employees that's who you are the characters are the characters the characters are a resource and shadow dark is starting to feel a little bit like that 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 the players are running through the scenarios. But we've also, I think, since even in the 80s and 90s, we cared about our characters and we were in the heads of our characters, right? And when your characters die off that frequently, I think it lo you lose the connection to the story and you want to think through the eyes of your character. You want the players to think through the eyes of their characters. But their characters are changing, which means their process is changing, which means the storyline changes, which might be okay, I guess it depends on the story. But if you have like a campaign thread, the players are going to remember the campaign thread. But then they're also like, yeah, but my character doesn't care about that campaign, campaign thread. They care about something else. So this is like a weird thing that I'm dealing with and I'm trying to understand. And our play, I think my players are trying to understand, which is how do you maintain consistency in the story when the characters are cycling a lot? Now, I think there's some tricks that one could do early on in a game to to do this. And one would be to essentially have them as all part of a central organization. They either have a central faction or a central guild and the whole group of adventurers, even including ones that you haven't met yet are from this faction or guild that if you say we're all from Wardenwood and Wardenwood has an adventurers hall and the adventurers hall are all of the like, you know, farmers who didn't want to keep farming and said, instead, we're going to go out there and try to make the world a better place. And that, that, guild has a goal the guild has a motivation the guild has storylines and the characters might cycle through but the new characters that show up always have a connection back to that guild so then the motivation is consistent and i've done this actually in fourth edition games i had it where we expected characters to die a lot or characters to swap a lot so they were all part of the same organization and if this is a dark sun campaign and they were all part of the same group which meant that if they switch characters or lost a character, the motivations were all still there. They all knew why they were there and everything sort of carried over from character to character. So I think you could do something like that. I didn't do something like that in Shadow Dark now. And we are dealing with a situation where the players are thinking about their characters. The characters are like, I don't really care about Wardenwood nearly as much as I care about my goblin village that we want to save, which is the reason that I'm here. So the players grab the same hook, but with a different motivation. So they knew that they wanted to get the cure to Mugnablum's curse but it's for a different purpose. And now that different purpose is manifesting in a way that the game needs to change. So that's kind of a weird, a weird situation that, that comes up. And I don't know at this point in the campaign, they're hitting fourth level. A, hopefully they don't die quite as often, but B, I think it might be too late to kind of, I, I could bring in a new central faction and basically say like, you all work for Titania, the Fey queen now. Or you all work for whomever that you get to choose. But, or maybe I guess there could be multiple ones that connect. And then, but I could say like this is one of these three sort of like a 13th age icons sort of idea. 13, 13th age has the, the 13 icons and you have your icon relationships. And you could have these icons here, which are sort of like the fronts. You have Titania, you have Mugdoblob. You have, you know, you probably don't want people working for Mugdoblah, but essentially you could, you could have that. Haldren, an elf sorcerer, could be a faction. He's missing, but he has people out there who are looking for him. So I think that as players are making new characters, either having a connection to those three factions, you can be tied to Tatani, you can be tied to Wardenwood and the, 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 the leader of Wardenwood, or you could be tied to Haldren would be good ones that all would steer them in the same general motivation. I think that that's something that we, that we want to do. So that has been an interesting observation that I've had while running these last, these last few games. Those two observations. One is the, the disassociation between players and characters with the amount of deaths that are occurring. And two, how the motivations for the adventure maintain continuity or don't maintain continuity as as characters are switching out a lot they have so so let's let's go to our strong so we got to build our town the goblin town is most important but we want to have a strong start 
So they are in Drusilla's lab. They have a new, we have a new NPC. That NPC is CRISPR, the sentient cure to Mugdal Blub's curse, which is a ochre jelly. Let's grab the stat block for the ochre jelly. We'll go to Shadow Dark RPG. So they have this ochre jelly, and I think they'll just get the stat block for the ochre jelly, right? I think I think that this, it, you know, it has its own motivation. It has its own motivation, but I think it has it is it is a you know this is kind of what it is, and it they'll do the same sort of thing. It can do all of these things, and I think that they can split it, and they probably don't know that they can split it yet. But and and what's its motivation? Probably to devour Mugdablub, right? Motivation to devour Mugdablub. One of the things I'm considering, and I could let the dice decide, is whether the dragon that they faced, Varro Slayer, Varro's Bane, uh, the one that gave mouth to mouth with chlorine gas, whether it had the, the, the disease had spread so fast that it is now an ooze dragon already. And I think a fun way to do that would be to roll a saving throw for the dragon. So we could do a 50-50 thing. On an 11 plus, the dragon is still, is, is, it, is getting worse, but not fully succumb. On a 1 to 10, it has, during the time when they've been down here working on this, it has succumb to... Mugdoblub's curse, and now it is a Mugdoblub ooze dragon. And the idea that there is an ooze dragon out there really f- is kind of cool to me. Is that cooler than if they cure the dragon? I mean, curing the dragon would be great because then they have a dragon ally. But then you've got that worry of like, are they going to call on that dragon ally? I mean, maybe he's like, look, you saved my life once, I'll save your life once. That'd be reasonable. So we're going to say on a one to 10, got my big, big ass metal D20. Uh, on a one to 10, it has succumbed to the curse. On an 11 to 20, uh, it is still a- around and still okay. 10. It barely made it. It barely failed. It has failed. 1 to 10, right? It was a failure. So uh, a secret and clue is the dragon, and I think I wrote the dragon's name down. I hope past. Come on, past Mike Shea. I didn't write the dragon's name down. Rairdin. It was Forest Hewer was the name of the dragon. It is now Rairdin. It is now known as Rairdin Varro's Bane. So that's a secret. And if we can make a new NPC. Oop. Mugdalblub Dragon. Who's now a forest dragon with Uzi bits. I think it has so what would the Uzi bits? What what trait does it pick up? I think it can split, right? I think if you hack it enough, it splits into multiple dragons. Like every you know, I don't know, when it reaches half, it splits. And I think it now has a instead of a poison, it's got an acid breath. Right, ooze dragons, acid breath, that works. And I, I kind of like the idea that like it splits. Like every, I don't know how this works, but every ten damage, or when it reaches half its hit points, right? Instead of a three d eight breath weapon, it has a what like a two d eight, two d six breath weapon. Eh, good enough. And we'll see if they face it, but it's gone, right? So they'll look and they'll see it in the, the rotted dragon scale and a big pile of ooze and like oh. And what they'll realize is that the ooze dragon, there is now an ooze dragon out there. I think that's kind of fun. I kind of like that. So, Riordan has become an ooze dragon and flown away. That's pretty good. CRISPR. Oh, I, I have, I guess I already made an NPC card for it. I think I have two NPC cards. I, guess, I think I made one last time. So we'll delete this one. Has a motivation to destroy Mugdoblub. Curse. Or Mugdoblub itself. But it's far too small to do so itself. It must eat. I think that, you know, were Mugdalblub destroyed, few would know the difference between CRISPR and Mugdalblub. Both are huge sentient oozes. I still have a strong start. So they're down there in Drusilla's lab. They have the sentient ooze. We could just have an encounter. It'd be easy enough to roll an encounter. I don't, I don't think they've left yet. I don't think they've made their way out. Oh, they ran. I, did, I take that back. They ran into the kobolds. They were on their way out. Who seeks their brethren who had been turned to stone. They have two 
two stone to flesh scrolls. They'll part with one of them for a magic item. The other they use on their friend. Hey, my mom is here. Hi, mom. Out of game talk. And so the kobolds. So what is a cool name for a kobold band? I think they have a, if I recall, there is a group generator in here. Hang on. Rival Crawlers. Their party name is the 11, the Iron 12, the Iron Miscreants. That's pretty cool. So what are the Iron Miscreants? What do they, what do they want? What's, uh, is there a motivation in here? There was another part of the table. Known for 17, finding a legendary sword. Hmm. How about seeking? They seek a legendary sword. They seek the Emerald Blade. Once held by the Green Knights. They, they're mercenaries of Titania and learned that they can trade the blade to get the heck out of the gloaming. Put that in our secrets as well. So then we have to go to our goblin village. So now we need to think about this goblin village. And there's a few ways to go about one is we just build it. We just sit here and we come up with like all of the things that we need for a goblin village. Two is we work with our players to build it. And we could do a bit of both, which is probably what we're going to do. So this is the place where a, f a handful of the characters, I think two, at least two of the characters, Lickmack and Yaxpick are both from here. Probably we should have a name for this place. Galvin Cairn. I don't know why it sounds cool. So Galvin Cairn is a goblin village. Now I want to avoid the stereotypes of like, oh, it's an underground goblin village where they run around partying all the time and actually make it a nice place. However, having it be subterranean, I don't think is, is too, where is this goblin village located? What is 209? Let's look an area. We could just we could just take over one of the spots that already exists. The Troll Cave. Black marrow, black marrow tree roots that have been gnawed to a pulp lie scattered around the cave entrance. A warty, lanky-haired troll named Barbarog layers inside. He's addicted to toxic oil and the marrow tree roots that grant him temporary immunity to fire, his greatest fear. Cave houses a suit of green-hued mithril plate mail etched with leaves and a plus one longsword named Rot Ruin that can... Rust one door-sized piece of metal it touches into powder once a day. I, you know, I don't, I was going to take this place over, but I really kind of like it. So maybe we keep the troll cave, Barbarog's cave. I like this, I like this whole story. Maybe the goblins actually want to send the characters to the troll cave. Would be fun. We could instead make 209, instead of it being the troll, we could, we could, we could sort of expand upon this and say that there is this cave. So one thought I had is that Barbarog is actually sort of a guardian of the village. And the goblin, you know, he keeps anyone else from going and invading the village. But, you know, any of the goblins or any of their friends, oh yeah, you're cool, you can come on in. But the, 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 I like the idea of a troll that's addicted to the marrow tree roots and you know, guarding this, this, this place, Th that seems fun. And I kind of hate to lose that idea. So what if he used to, okay, so here's an idea where we can, we can use, we can use a couple of things from this. So the troll cave, Barbarog's cave, which leads to, what did I call this place? Galvin Karn. It just sounds cool, right? Galvin is probably some kind of goblin hero. Is a goblin hero. From long ago. The village is named after him. There is a... So one of the features that I want to have is a natural column carved into a wizard's tower where the wizard, the goblin wizard... Now let's get a name for the goblin wizard here. I think they're... Where are the names? The names are beginning. One of these quick reference sheets has names. There it is. Nine. Willie? No, that's got uh, Gorb. Let's give him a, a different name. Gorb. Creed. Gore Creed. And we'll give him a surname that is made from the 
Rival Adventurers. 13, the Emerald 8. The Emerald Moon, we will call him. Kind of a cool name. And we'll make a new character for him. And he is a follower of what god? Who did the Emerald Knights... So we have Amazad, Kytheris, Magdablub, Shun the Vile, Titania, and the Willow Man. I don't know that he follows any of these. Let's take a look at the Shadow Dark RPG has patrons, I think. Ord. Ord works. And what is a cool... I need a name for this tower. Grey Moon Tower? No. Resides in... What is the location? What did I call it? Oh, come on. There's more. I just wrote a cairn. Galvin Cairn. Okay, so we got that link. A wizard's tower name. Are there tables in here? That rival adventures table is kind of a fun one. Let's see. I think, is there a location name? So there's a shop generator name. I don't know if that quite works for the demon's lantern. I think I like the orc names. Let's see. We'll roll a d20 and we'll see what we get. So 16. It could be known as Barton, uh, Elendos, Torvash. Torvash is pretty cool. We'll call it Torvash. Reminds me of Todash. The Wizard's Tower. Tovash. Cool. All right. So locations. Torvash. The Wizard's Tower of Torvash. Then uh, we can quickly generate some other locations in this town. There is a nice town generator here. There could be a local tavern called six the singing the singing rat i like it known for 13 the it's underground fighting pit great that's good what kind of foods do they have i need a 12 cider the town generator here in shadow dark rpg is really good i'm glad i get a chance to use it they sell dates and olives very nice raw flail fish and fried basilisk eyes. Cool. Like it? Oh, and drinks. What kind of drink do they have? 12, Van Dickel Whiskey. I don't even know what that is. Van Dinkel Whiskey. 20 gold a sip. Cool. Then shops. Uh, they have, let's see, three. The Dead Body Collector. That sounds grim. They have a seven. A shipwright? That doesn't quite. Carpenters. And a leather worker. We'll do like two of each. So poor shop also includes four. A pawn shop and fence. And then a couple of high class joints. Wealthy shops. Nine. A master blacksmith. And an antiques and curios shop. Cool. We can get some names for these, I think. The, let's see, we get a couple of D20s here. One and eleven. Think and... No, let's see. That doesn't work. I think the Fink Storehouse. 15 and 1. The Village... The the Village Toad. We'll go... Phil, the Village Sons doesn't work. So we'll go with the Village Toad. And maybe that's where they take bodies. That's how, that, that, you know, I don't know if I like that. I was going to say, yeah, that's a place where you take bodies and big frogs eat them. It feels very goblin-y, but it also feels pretty stereotypically goblin-y. The Carpenters. I don't know why you need a carpenter. Boot and boot and beetle i like that that sounds like the leather worker shop though carpenters are boring we're getting rid of carpenters the master blacksmith six fox and 17 fox and market no I'll call it grigor's hammer i'm gonna pick a different name off that list and we could pick a goblin name instead instead of grigor's hammer and then we need a name for the curio shop i lost my list there we go this is the Curios shop. We'll roll, but I might just pick 29. The Jade, the Jade Oddments, that per, that's perfect. Sometimes it really works out. Antiques and Curios. So that gives us a good list of different places they could go. What might be happening in this village? If you recall, over on Sly Flourish, we have Running Towns and Fantasies. This is an article about how to make towns and fantasies. And it says that you should start off with a fantastic feature. We have a natural column that forms a wizard's tower. That's kind of in the center. So we've got that. We want to set up a situation. What is the event that can occur? And I think that's something that we want to do here. Luckily, it looks like they have a something happens list. So let's go to that 
something happens and roll a d100 we have a 28 you're being magically scried upon so when they get there we'll do an event i might do two things we'll do a second one as well i can use use whatever i need 51. You hear a beast cry out in pain just ahead. Eh, I kind of like the huge swarm of bats crashes over you and swirls away. It's a sign of good luck among the goblins. So that's good. Now there's a quest down here. Curing, curing Barbarog. This is more for our notes, so we'll put it in our notes. Barbarog, the gatekeeper of Galvin's Cairn, of Galvin Cairn, has gone missing. He had begun to eat the trees outside of the cave and then went wandering below Galvincairn to, what do we want to call it? We need a dungeon name. The Dread Wastes to the Dread Wastes to the Dread Wastes. The Dread Wastes is a ruin or it's either a, a ruins or a set of caves that lie beneath Galvincairn that nobody goes to. It's considered bad and bad stuff down there. But he wandered down there and he said something like the gate must open. I must open the gate, he said. And I think there is a gate to Marrow down there that he's trying to open. What's his name again? I already forgot. Barber, Barbarog. Barbarog said something about opening the gate below and then went down to the Dread Wastes. So the Dread Wastes, let's get ourselves a map. So I have something new. A new feature for patrons of Sly Flourish is a Dyson map gallery. This web page with, look at that, scrollable, sizable thumbnails has all of Dyson's commercially available maps as the ones that he uh, offers up as available for royalty-free license. And I built a page where you can very quickly scan through and look at a whole bunch of maps and pick one. And I want one for underground, an old underground ruin called the Gray Wastes. Is that what I call it? The Dread Wastes. And what looks good? Probably don't want it to be too big. Probably a mixture of... So patrons of Sly Flourish can find this under the tools section of your Patreon tools. So if you go to your Patreon rewards page, there's a Sly Flourish Patreon rewards page. It's the top level page on the site. It's the one that's linked. It's the one that you get emailed to you. You can find this link on here. The other cool thing is you can download it. So you can download your own copy of the gallery. And when you click that, it will download a zip file that has all of the maps and the web page that you can host on your local machine. So then you can, you can use it there that way. If you're ever worried that I'll disappear or this will disappear, you can download your own copy. I actually made this because I was on, had nightmares that Dyson's would go down. If Dyson's went down, I want to know I saw the map. So I made my own downloadable copy, but then I was like, oh, this would be a good thing to offer up to patrons too. And thus here it is. 500 maps, more than 500 maps currently. And the idea is you kind of scroll through them till you find one that you like. That's all right. Find the first one that sort of works for you. That one's kind of cool. This one could be sort of fun. I like it. Copy image. Let's see if I can just drop it right in here. Bingo. So that gives me a good map for the Dreadways. I don't know that I'm going to need it right away. I guess like I need a, a few things. So what is this place? What What's one of the darker gods in, not in the gloaming, but just in general? So we have deities. We have St. Targarius, Gidi, Marina, Ord, Memnon, Romlet, the Pillager. We have Shun the Vile. I think, so we have a character who's a follower of Shun the Vile. So I think that these, that this is like an, an old temple to Shun the Vile is pretty cool. So locations, we will start at the 12. We will go. So, well, let's see. Is that where we want to go? No, we're going to start at one o'clock and go clockwise. Because that's they're most likely to come down this corridor here. So we have like the ruined, let's see, ruined pillars, sealed tomb, rickety walkway and overhangs, temple doors, hallway of Shun, altar of Shun, crypts of the old queens, nah, old kings, the old ones. Eh, don't know what that means. There's two doors the drop, 
what would this be? The ruined temple. We have a ruined shrine. We have fetid, fetid caves. What would this altar of sacrifice and prison and cell? The walkway between worlds. And the final area will be the gate to Marrow. We will use random creatures for this place. I think that will work if they, if they end up heading down here. And we'll wing it from there. So we've got a location. We've got some, we, we've got a map. We've got some locations that can go there. I think that's good enough. Let's go back to our notes. So I've got a few secrets left. Below Galvin Cairn lies the Dread Waste. Supposedly a ruined temple lies there from centuries ago. The Dread Waste is a secret temple to Shun the Vile. As Marrow closes in, a gateway has torn open between Marrow and the world. The high priestess of the temple of Shun is the great great grandmother of uh i don't think she's here this week though morgan good enough travel to galvin karen cure the goblins and talk to and the npc is gorkreeb the emerald moon choices delve into the dread wastes or seek the other sorcerer guy, Haldren. That seems right. So I got strong start, scenes, secrets and clues, locations, NPCs, monsters we get from the book, treasure we get from the book. I think we are all set. So I have got what I need. Friends, I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me today while I prepared for my Shadow Dark game. If you enjoyed this show and you want more stuff like this, the best way to see all of the stuff that I do is to subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. It is absolutely free to sign up. You get a free Adventure Generator PDF for signing up, and you get a weekly RPG-related email sent to your inbox that includes links to all of the other work that I do. It's the best way to stay up on all of the things that I do. You can also support me directly on Patreon. Patrons get access to things like a really fantastic random generator that I built, that Dyson map uh, tool that I just showed you comes from there, but there's other tools as well. Whole bunch of different source books, dedicated Discord server, a monthly Q&A. It's a very, very low price. It's a really fantastic deal. And you can pick up any of my books, including Forge of Foes, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, the Lazy DM's Companion, the Lazy DM's Workbook, or any of the fantastic books are all available in the Sly Flourish bookstore. Links for all of those are in the show notes below. Thank you all so much. Have a great day and get out there and play an RPG.